Criminal psychics, do they work? Well, in the case of Kaylee Anthony, big news, courtesy of the National Enquirer with us, the Vincent sisters, who are part of this big article that uh, we've uh, talked about, and I haven't really shared a lot of it with you. Let me uh, go over this from the National Enquirer. Again, this story continues to shock and mortify uh, concerning the death, uh, first the disappearance and now the death of Kaylee Anthony. Uh, her mother, Casey, is being held. Uh, the Pittsburgh-based uh, psychics even predicted accurately that the body would be found inside a black plastic bag along with a blanket. The story continues. Now the sisters have shared with investigators and the Enquirer their chilling visions of the scene where Kaylee died, and both agree that Casey did not act alone. Quote, Casey was packing to visit a boyfriend, Suzanne told the Enquirer. Quote, she was in the bedroom of her parents' house with Kaylee, who was throwing a fit, not wanting her mother to leave. We believe Casey has been, has been, had been giving her something, cough her perhaps, to sedate her, but it wasn't working. Finally, Casey snapped. In a rage, she puts her hand over Kaylee's mouth. When that doesn't shut her up, she covers her mouth, either with duct tape, later found on the body, or with a pillow. Suddenly, she realizes that Kaylee is not moving. She checks. Kaylee is dead. She panics. She puts Kaylee in a laundry bag and puts that bag in a plastic bag which she places in the car's trunk. Wow. That's correct. That's the vision that we feel was uh, little Kaylee's uh, last moment. A tragedy for a young, young child. Yeah. Very sad. Any remorse that you're feeling from the mother? No. No, I think that she is, um, she sort of like separates herself from uh, what's happened like it, it didn't happen. So it's kind of like a strange disassociation. Sure. It's really kind of a strange case. You say in the story she didn't act alone. No. I, th I think she had help. She, she feels she had help. Um, I feel it was another male and a possible another male who may have known but not knowingly, you know, disposed of the body. Uh, maybe she just said, come help me or just let's go to a location. Um, and then after the fact, it all unraveled, and it was like, I may have been an accessory to a crime here. What about the boyfriend? Oh, I feel the boyfriend had some um, she challenge. She had many boyfriends. Yeah. Many boyfriends. Well, variety is the spice of life, so they tell me. We go to the phones at 412-333-PCNC, and we go to Karen. Karen, welcome to Night Talk. Hey, hi, how are you? Great. Hey, I wanted to ask the sisters how they felt whenever they did indeed find the body, where they said it was, um, how did they feel about that? I mean, I can answer it. Um, I felt uh, closure for, the, for everybody. I felt closure for myself because everyone has been following this story. Um, I felt deep sadness because everyone wants to keep on the back burner that maybe, you know, maybe someone has her and then they'll, like, you know, release her. Um, but definitely sad and... Um, Definitely, now we have closure, and now we need to make that person accountable. Um, Kaylee's became everyone's little girl, and uh, it, it felt like it was, uh, I have two girls, I felt like it was one of my girls. Apparently said Casey was everybody's little girl, too. Yeah, yeah. Casey was everybody's girl, too. Yeah. Wow. You look at um, the grandparents. They stood by, or the, the grandparents, the parents, they stood by their daughter through thick and thin. Uh, we saw this play out on national TV father, getting in fights with protesters, getting reads on them. He's a little hot tempered, so the apple doesn't fall far from Now, wait a minute. I could have said that. <laughs> um, I don't think he believes his daughter did it. Um, I think he believes someone else took her. Uh, but now I think his reality is, is checking in with him. He's starting to look at his daughter like, I actually have a child that committed murder and killed my beloved grandchild. I think that is inner turmoil and pain for him to have a reality check. I mean, a nice, normal family, and I, what, what, what did I do wrong? What did mom do wrong? And our daughter is killing our beloved grandchild. Let's go back to the, uh, the final moments of Kaylee. Can you share that with us? Fear? Pain? I feel it was a lot of fear, a lot of pain, um, unable to breathe, struggling for air. And, uh, it's a beautiful little girl here. Uh, the person that did this to this little girl has no remorse. Yeah. Uh, the person has no feelings. It was just anger. Uh, things got carried away, went too far. 
uh, anytime you put something over a child's mouth, the intent there is they could smother or they could choke and uh, not breathe anymore. And then the mother doing this, not a stranger. Yeah, the mother did this. Her right. whole motivation was um, the little girl was acting up, being a two and a half year old, playing around. Her intent was to go see her boyfriend. But you go back to the, the vision you got about the girl being how she died. Um, I felt that she tried to quiet her and then, like, you know, be quiet. I want to go out and then just to, like, put her in a, in a sort of a timeout, put a little tape over her mouth. And I kind of think it just went a little too far, and she was still acting up. And uh, to quiet her, to scare her briefly, she put the pillow over her head. But, you know, if you can only hold your breath a minute and 40 seconds, you go longer than a minute and 40 seconds, you have trauma. Heck, I can't hold my breath four seconds. Much, much more with the Vincent Sisters next, right here on Night Talk. Stay tuned, everybody.